This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Dream? I doubt it. Ah! Ah! Are... Are you the first ghost that Raven told me about? Yep, that's me. The ghost of Remake's past. Grab my controller and walk with me. Your... controller? Up there. Okay... Where are we going? Whoa! Where are we? You remember the Sorcerer's Apprentice from Disney's Fantasia, right? Right. Well, here we are in its remake, 2010's The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, great. One of the biggest financial flops of Jerry Bruckheimer's career. Hey, my movie was a flop at the box office. Are you going to make fun of that, too? Anyway, our movie begins in medieval England, where we get a little backstory of the wizard Merlin and his apprentices. He taught his secrets to three trusted apprentices, Balthazar, Veronica, and Horvath. He should have trusted only two. Because women should not be sorcerers. <laughs> the hell was that? The narration continues with explaining how Merlin was killed by his arch-nemesis, Morgan Le Fay. His apprentice Horvath, played by Alfred Molina, betrays him and steals a spell that'll give her the power to raise an army of the undead, and Merlin's second apprentice, Veronica, sucks Morgana's soul into her own body. Well, at least these apprentices are doing more than just carrying buckets of water. Hang on, Morgana starts to kill Veronica on the inside, so Nicolas Cage saves this woman with another woman inside her by turning her into a Matryoshka doll? That's just cruel. Not just Morgana, but every sorcerer who tries to free her is trapped within the doll, including Horvath. As Merlin lay dying, he gave Balthazar his dragon ring, saying it would guide him to the child who would one day grow to be Merlin's successor, the Prime Millennial. The Prime Millennial? We're doomed. Actually, it's the Prime Merlinian that they're looking for which leads the apprentice to research spanning the entire world over the next few centuries. And never, it is said, will Balthazar waver from his quest. Let's see, while I'm in England, maybe I should check out this Harry something kid? I'm sure it's nobody. <laughs> Cross promotion! We meet this young boy named David, living in New York in the year 2000. While on a field trip, he passes a note to his crush, Becky, asking if she wants to be his girlfriend. But the note is blown away before he gets a chance to see her response, leading him to this strange old building. Twelve Grimald Place? Maybe they should have looked into that Potter kid. Actually, it's an antique shop filled with strange curiosities. No way. Oh no, Will Smith's in there. <laughs> The second emperor of the Han Dynasty. 
Locked his least favorite wife in this urn. I am so English, can't you tell? To be fair, credit must be given to Nicolas Cage here for doing a more down-to-earth performance when this material could have lent itself to something more over the top. You're scraping at the door! Scraping at the door! Exactly. But is it impossible for Cage to do an English accent for this English character? Hello. Been drinking, have we? Just a nip. Going to detain a blighter for enjoying his whiskey? It's all right, that's enough, sir. Beggars and mash. Sir? Bubbles and squeak. What? Smoke the old pie. Sir? Haggis! Then again, maybe not. Balthazar here shows David the ring that will determine if he's the prime or Linian, and just like King Arthur before him, it turns out that this little nobody is destined for greater things. I have been searching a very long time. Almost ten minutes of screen time. It's a lot longer than it seems. He tells David not to do or touch anything while he goes to get his first Encantus to train him as a sorcerer, and then David immediately frees the imprisoned Horvath. Oops. So now we're in a magic fight between Ghost Rider and Dr. Octopus. This is a weird day. I want that doll. Jingle all the way to the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Balthasar sucks Horvath and himself into that urn from before, giving David a chance to escape. Naturally, nobody believes his story, then we cut to ten years later. Oh, happy birthday. Wow, his little friend from the bus turned into a black guy. That was a weird ten years. And David himself grew up into Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon. I'm sorry, I know that I'm in the minority here, but I just don't like this guy. He's like the nerd that other nerds go out of their way to avoid. I guess that explains why Becky here hasn't kept in any kind of contact with him in the last ten years. Yeah, sorry, pal, but you've got no realistic shot with this girl. So, uh, did you... you transfer? Yeah, I did, and, uh, got some, uh, help, treatment. Yes, um, that was weird. Yeah, you know what? It, it turns out it's just a, a glucose imbalance. Uh, hallucinations, not uncommon in young subjects. Ah, right. So that's... it's a great anecdote. <laughs> But enough of that, on to a Batman movie! Apparently the urn that Balthazar and Horvath were stuck in found a new home, but before we can see what that's all about, we jump back to David walking Becky to her job at the local radio station, and he helps her fix their malfunctioning antenna. <laughs> Thank you. Oh no, please, my pleasure. I could tell this is all it's pretty important for you. My show is like the one thing that, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, physics. That's my thing. Physics, electronics, same thing, right? He goes back to his lab that he converted from an old subway station. Because of course he has that. Where he works on his Tesla coil project while listening to Becky's radio show. I need another story. Something to get off my chest. My life is kind of boring. Need something that I can control. Yeah, and that's cool and all, but it could have been a whole lot better. We jump back to the end where Harvath escapes and tosses Balthazar out the window before he can come back too, but he escapes at the last second. Was Horvath really expecting that little move to mean anything, considering how long they've both been cheating death here? He tracks David back to his apartment, demands to know where that doll from before is, and whips up a couple of wolves to chase him down. Wolves? No, 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 <laughs> Luckily, Balthazar shows up and saves David in the nick of time. Ugh, not everything has to be epic. I know I already made a joke about how much this looks and sounds like a Batman movie, but this is whimsical! Throw us a little whimsy, soundtrack! Oh. 
this is not happening. This is not happening. I taste sour in my mouth. Why don't they just put him in glasses with tape in the middle and make the illusion complete? Balthazar explains that Horvath wants the doll to release Morgana and her followers so that they can destroy the world, and only with David's help can he put a stop to them. David, however, is a little reluctant. I want to forget about that day at Arcana Cabana. I want to forget about magic. I want to forget everything. You should duck. What? I. Holy overkill, Batman! He couldn't just pluck the ring from out of his apartment? He had to take the whole dresser with him? David agrees to help Balthazar on the condition that he be left alone after he does. Can you please put my dresser back? Dun, 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 Oh my god, dun, putting the dresser back is so epic! The soundtrack is serious, man! He uses a spell to track the doll, but since the eagle is too conspicuous, they opt for this mode of transportation. She missed me. Cagemobile, away! I'm gonna give you the basics, strictly sorcery 101. You've heard how people use only 10% of their brains? Yeah. Sorcerers can manipulate matter because they're born with the capability to use the entire power of their brains. Oh, so everyone's a sorcerer? Neat. So wait, is, is sorcery science or magic? Yes and yes. No, sorcery is magic, or an explanation for scientific phenomena that ignorant people of yesteryear didn't know how to explain. I think alchemy is a field of study that falls into both science and magic, but sorcery? That's just magic. They follow the doll to this little corner of Chinatown, but Horvath got to the doll first, and released this guy from it. He turns this paper dragon into a real dragon, and it chases after David. Oh god, come on. What's wrong? You never learned how to train your dragon? hi -yo! Luckily, he clears his mind enough to focus on what he has to do, and defeats the dragon. Did you see that? Did you see what I just did? I did it! To be perfectly fair, if I was a powerful magic user and I saw this twerp running around with a magical super weapon, I'd be pretty pissed off too. The police show up to investigate, but Balthazar knows how to handle them. Hey, what do you got? Did you see what happened here? You know what? Hey look, he's disguised as Big Daddy from Kick-Ass. Between you and me, Cap, I think some of these folks were hitting the saggy pretty hard. David wants to continue alongside Balthazar on his quest, so they go to his lab to train him into a proper sorcerer. Merlin Circle. It focuses your energy, helps you master new spells. It is where you will learn the art. Step inside, you leave everything else behind. Once you enter, there is no going back. So use the restroom now. Once you enter, there is no going back. So I should probably pee first. Oh, come on, really? Okay, that was strange. Your ring is not a piece of jewelry. It projects the electrical energy of your nervous system into the physical world. And just so we're on the same page here, it's nothing like a Green Lantern ring. After showing David his Encantus, which is a massive spellbook that can fold into the size of a wallet, they have a little montage, mostly to teach him how to throw magic missiles. True magic! True magic! Then they break for a little snack outside of Becky's building. Balthazar warns David that he can't afford any distractions like girlfriends, but whatever. Becky! What a, what a coincidence! Oh, hey Dave. You going uptown or...? Are you stalking me? Yes. Yes, yes he, he is. is. He invites Becky to check out his Tesla coil in his lab, but Balthazar doesn't like where this is going. Love is a distraction. Sorcery requires complete focus. If that was the explanation for why Jedi can't fall in love, that would make so much more sense than the actual reason. Horvath, meanwhile, has listed the aid of the only other Morganian in the area, which seems to be Diet Chris Angel here. We'll use their satellite dishes on the rooftops there, and 
there. And there. Oh no, this movie's gonna end with a sky beam. David continues his training until Becky shows up for their not date. Balthazar goes back to his old shop to get something he left behind. So Balthazar has this secret brick vault that he was using to hide his spellbook, and now this bag of tricks. So why didn't he just stick the doll in here instead of leaving it out in the open for anyone to bump into it? Because how else could fate accidentally lead the Prime Merlinian to it? Back at the lab, David and Becky start bonding over his Tesla coil as it plays one of her songs from her latest broadcast. Sure is lucky that this girl decided to not regard this remembering her favorite indie bands as creepy or stalkery. He walks Becky back to school the next day, and then Horvath ambushes him in the bathroom, but Balthazar catches up with him and they escape after tossing Horvath into a mirror. Wake up that moron in stall number three for me, would you? Oh, for heaven's sake. Horvath was trying to kill me. His moral compass doesn't exactly point north. Yeah, wh what about yours? Huh? You haven't been completely truthful with me. That guy called me the Prime Merlinian. Balthazar, what is that? It's an imaginary line on a map which splits the world in half, marking zero degrees longitude. Now I'm not doing anything else until you start being truthful with me about what's going on. He's trying to outcage him, isn't he? Balthazar explains that only the Prime Merlinian can defeat Morgana before she is brought back and raise her undead army. Only a Prime can defeat the Fallen. You think I've been teaching you magic tricks for some little girl's tea party? When you stepped inside this circle, I told you there was no going back. You took an oath. No, I don't think he did. He definitely did not. Horvath tries to track down David by hacking into his school records. I have a student who's failing my class. I need his file. First, I'll need to see your faculty identification card. You don't need to see my faculty identification card. We don't need to see his identification. These are not the droids you're looking for. Oh, come on. Again? Are you sure you haven't seen this movie before? No, I never have. We jump back to Balthazar, who explains that the Prime Merlinian won't need his ring in order to defeat Morgana. Is that the Prime Merlinian, or a Schwartz user? The ring is Bobkins! I found it in a Crackerjack box! Balthazar steps out to let David go on another date with Becky. Which completely contradicts what he was saying earlier about trying to avoid distractions. But he has to tidy up a bit first. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look, Jerry Bruckheimer... You already won us over with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. You don't have to try to be Michael Bay. Then, taking a cue from the tale this movie's based on, David enchants a bunch of brooms and mops to clean up for him, all to the tune of the original Paul Dukas composition. The way this movie has varied so wildly from the source material so far, I'm honestly surprised that they would do this. I kind of wish they had more motifs based on the Dukat piece, but this is actually pretty cool. I command you to stop! Stop! Becky. Hi. Hi, you're on time. You forgot, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm having issues. Like my coils. Luckily, Balthazar comes in just in time before David gets electrocuted. Run! Disperse! I call foul. This scene is just begging for Balthazar to stop the spell by throwing his hands out like the sorcerer from Fantasia. Magic isn't a game. No shortcuts. You will not control your magic if you will not control yourself. You need to stop your worrying and start believing in yourself. Is that what you do? What I do isn't the point. I think it is. I'm convinced you exist purely to make my life a living hell. 
You don't know anything about a living hell. You know nothing of hell. Yeah, um, didn't this kid volunteer to continue with the sorcerer stuff when he could have just walked away as soon as Balthazar got the doll back? And I think the thing to say after someone saves your life is something along the lines of, thank you. Anyway, he ditches Balthazar because his faith in his abilities has been sufficiently shaken. He goes up to the roof of the Chrysler building again, where Becky soon finds him. Which I guess can be accessed by anyone? And it turns out she still likes him even after he had to shoo her away from their last date. Do you really think that one botched date was gonna make me hate you forever? You give him too much credit, lady. How many dates do you think he's had? David goes back just in time to save Balthazar from Horvath and his apprentice, as they make off with the doll. They get into a car chase where they both show off their ability to change their cars into different models. Oh, nice one! I know I've already made a couple of Batman jokes here, but come on! You have the power to change your car, and you don't go for a Batmobile? Shame on you, sir. Balthazar and David then get trapped in a mirror like Horvath was earlier. Uh, 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 what the heck is this? Yes, we drove through a mirror. We're trapped in a reverse world. So? It is, it is. Horvath's payback for the bathroom mirror. Uh, no, no, we won't die as long as we get out of here soon. Okay. By driving through our own reflection. Fantastic. There, in the window. This is it. But wait, why couldn't Horvath get out through his reflection before? Great continuity! The chase comes to an end as Horvath gets Merlin's ring from David, so Balthazar is left to stop him from freeing Morgana on his own. No one knows how much time they have. To be with the people that are the most important. Enjoy it. No one must know magic exists! That's why I'm taking this giant eagle anyone can see! Horvath brings Veronica and Morgana out of the doll, but Morgana's in the driver's seat, and begins the rising. But the spell is interrupted by Becky just kicking one of the satellite dishes out of alignment. Wow, that was easy! David takes out Horvath by strapping one of his coils to the front of his car. Balthazar sucks Morgana out of Veronica and into himself, but then she rematerializes on her own and tries to flash fry our heroes. No! You got the touch! You got the power! Yeah! You put that music in there just to get me to like this kid, didn't you? You can't tell me it's not working. Now it's my turn. True magic! True magic! Unfortunately, he doesn't have the strength of magic to win the day, so what does he do? He uses the magic he does know to turn the entire park into a giant Tesla coil, which weakens Morgana enough for him to deliver the final blow. So the movie ends with the world being saved, David brings back Balthazar after apparently paying the ultimate price, he gets the girl, and aside from one more last minute nod to the original Fantasia sequence that suggests that Horvath is still alive and planning revenge for the sequel, they all lived happily ever after. So that was The Sorcerer's Apprentice. What did you think? It's a pretty fun little movie. It's not completely airtight, but for what it is, it's enjoyable. I'm not crazy about Jay Baruchel, but the chemistry between him and the uncomfortable weirdo that is Nicolas Cage can't be denied. Alfred Molina makes for a great villain. The use of magic was nice and creative. The music was a little more bombastic than it needed to be, and again, it could have used a bit more of the original theme by Dukat mixed into it. But at the end of the day, this is a fun fantasy adventure flick, which I think is worth a look. So, since I enjoyed this movie, does that mean that we're done here? Well, we're done with my part anyway. We do yet turn another page. You mean, I still have to be haunted by two more ghosts? This is just the way that things are done. They are what they are. Do not blame me. Yeah.
more. More.